morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, my name is Romy Velez. I am a PhD student at the University of Wyoming at the Evolving AI Lab. And today I'm going to present the paper, Dolby Research Creates Robots with General Skills for Exploration, by myself and Jeff Kloon. Now, knowledge search is an evolutionary algorithm. We're all pretty familiar with EAs, and traditionally the ones that we use in our research, the ones that we first learn that we're most familiar with, are objective-based EAs. So in an objective-based EA, we have some problem, and we want a solution to uh, move towards some objective. So, you know, very, very, very simple example. We have a robot that wants to climb a hill, so that hill is on top of our objective. So we have a fitness function that rewards by proximity to our objective. So again, a very simple transportation, very simple example. Now EAs can be very, very powerful, and we can use them to do things like evolve gates for quadrupeds, or even design antenna for the NASA spacecraft. Uh, but even though they're powerful, they do have shortcomings. Mainly they struggle with low optimal. Now this is even more present when we have what's called a deceptive problem. Because in the septic problem, we have many global optima, and we have that one global optimum that we're looking for. Now, novelty search was created in the hope to kind of circumvent uh, deceptive problems. So novelty search, we're going to completely ignore the objective, and instead what we want is we want to encourage behavioral diversity. So in this you know, really simple representation, we have robots that explore the search space, get a lot of diversity, and lo and behold, we find that global optimum. So it helps us to find the global optimum, it helps us to avoid global optima. So this is really powerful, but because it's so different from what most of us have come to accept and trust from what we've learned, from what we use on a daily basis, people are hesitant to adopt it. So there's con concern in the scientific community concerning it. The main focus of that concern, or the main uh, vocal objection, is that knowledge search is kind of like a random search. Even though in the original uh, knowledge search paper by Neiman Stanley, they show that knowledge search and random search are not the same thing. Um, so one reason that this uh, concern could be persistent is because the difference between knowledge search and random search was never really explored. So in this paper, in this talk, what we want to look at is, again, we examine knowledge search with random search, and as well as maybe start to look at some of the distinctions between knowledge search and random search to kind of help put this issue to rest. So now, this is a typical problem that we might want an EA to solve. So this is a septic based problem from the visual knowledge search paper. It's called the hard maze. We have a simulated robot controlled by an artificial neural network. Now, we want that robot to get from the start location in red always to the goal objective in green. Now, again, if we're using objective-based EA, our fitness function is going to be the proximity to the goal. But very quickly in this example, you can see that's not going to work. We're going to get stuck in this local optimum and this dead end. And you can see this is any type of experiment, any type of problem we want to solve where we want to get to some goal and we get stuck in local optima. And we can be here all day and hit our head against this wall, but we're not going to move. Now, how would knowledge search solve this problem? Well, as I said before, knowledge research, we're going to ignore the objective. So for this visualization, I'm just going to take it out. And instead, what we want to do is we want to encourage behavioral diversity. Well, in order to encourage behavioral diversity, we have to describe it somehow. So we're going to use what's called a behavioral vector. So in this problem, the behavioral vector is the final x and y position of the robots. In your problem, it could be something different. Sometimes it could be the domain specific, sometimes in some algorithms it could be less specific. So when we look at the behavioral diversity between two agents, we're going to take the Euclidean distance. And uh, so let me give you an example of kind of how this works. So the algorithm one runs and we build an archive. So a history of past individuals who were very diverse, who were very distinctive. And of course we have the current population as with any algorithm. So when we compare the behavioral diversity of one individual, so for instance, if we compare the behavioral diversity of this individual here in the middle, it has low fitness, it has low diversity, because the utility distance between its final x and y position and now the archive is very small. So it's not very unique, we don't really care about it too much. Whereas this individual here is going to be going to have high fitness, is going to be selected for, because its Euclidean distance is very large, has a, a, dip, a very diverse final x and y position. So we can easily see that this is going to encourage diverse behaviors, encourage diverse final x and y positions, and cause these robots to spread out across our maze, or to spread out across our search space, our problem space, our behavior space. And lo and behold, we find that goal solution and we wind up avoiding this local optimum. 
So, as you can see, this is a very powerful algorithm, and many experiments have shown that. But if you weren't familiar with Nali Search, or if you just walked in while I was doing this representation, it may seem as though Nali Search is simply wandering around the environment until we have it across the goal. So it seems very random. Now, the counter to this by the supporters and creators of Nali Search is that Nali Search is not random. And in fact, we're building exploratory skills. So, what do I mean by that? Well, you can imagine that initially the robot has no skills and simply just crashes into a wall. Now this is fine. So initially this is novel because no one's done it before, but it's going to get old really, really quickly. So the question I present is, well, how can this agent uh, uh, find new areas of the maze? How can it explore? Well, one idea that's postulated is that we're building skills. So what do I mean by that? Well, so you have this initial behavior. What if you tackle on turning behavior? Now, instead of crashing into the wall, you make a slight turn, you've now reached a different part of the maze. Well, if you tack on a wall following behavior, again, you now reach a different part of the maze. And so on with maybe a, a corridor navigating behavior. So by the accumulation of these skills, stepping stones, if you have to have a view ahead of me, uh, we're reaching different parts of the maze, we're accumulating novelty, uh, and we have very diverse behaviors. So this is what we think is going on behind all the research is actually uh, pushing the algorithm. So how can we test for that? What we're going to do is we're going to rerun the knowledge experiment until we find a successful solution. We're going to take that successful solution and we're going to put them into a new mage. Here we're calling the large maze. Now this is a path of a single successful knowledge search robot once it's transferred over to this new domain. And uh, one thing I want to point out really quickly is that if this agent has simply memorized its trajectory from the original hard maze, it would crash. But that's not what we see. Instead, it's doing something completely different even though it's in a completely different environment. So it's being adaptive, it's, uh, it seems to be competent in doing something. At least it knows something. At least that's what we think. So, as I said before, this is a single path. So let's get 50 different solutions from the original hard maze. Now, they fill out the maze pretty well. So to quantify this, we're going to use two metrics. For our first metric, area covered, very, very simple. We're looking at percent of in this visualization. Percent of black pixels to overall pixels, of course, to scalpel walls. That's our first metric. Our second metric is going to be called distance travel. So each robot starts at the center of the maze. It runs its evaluation and has some end position. Now we take the, uh, the length of the most efficient path between its start position and its end position. That's what we're going to use for our distance travel metric. Now the reason we're using this metric is because if an agent has a very long length for the distance travel, then that means they're doing some interesting things. You know, they're avoiding crashing, they're making some turns, maybe doing some wall following, maybe doing some uh, corridor uh, navigating. We're not necessarily saying these agents are doing wall following or uh, navi uh, na uh, obstacle avoidance. It's very hard to look into the mind of these robots and see what they're doing. And so these are very indirect measures of what could be going on. You know, you have these attributes and you're doing something. You might not know, might not know what and, and what combination, but it's a very good indicator of some competence. So we have four treatments in this test. The first one uh, I already described to you is called null research. Our second treatment, uh, which we call naive, are random artificial neural networks. So they have a simple baseline uh, initialization they have random weights that are all feed forward. Now this should give us an example of how a random network does on this particular maze. Now for our third treatment, which we call sorry, the uh, network complexity control, uh, these agents that we obtained from the hard maze through knowledge research uh, un underwent neat evolution. So they underwent complexification. We added nodes, we added connections. So it's possible if they had to show uh, high performance, is because they have extra brain power. So we wanted to kind of control for this. So these agents, so the Ike NCC treatment has the same number of nodes as the Ike novelty search robot. And again, all the connections are feed forward and random. So it's kind of like another random control. Now for our fourth treatment, this one's pretty cool. So we re-ran the original uh, hard maze experiment with an objective-based EA, uh, NEAT, until we found 50 uh, successful solutions. So we have to run it about 300 times to find 50 successful solutions. And so that will be our fourth treatment. 
Now keep in mind, it's an objective based EAD, but we're calling it Fitness to kind of keep in line with the literature with the previous uh, research. So what we see up top are the initial abilities, the initial performance. Essentially, you know, we make these random networks, we pop them in, we evolve these networks in the previous maze, we transform over, we pop them in. What's their initial ability? What's their initial skill? So there's no target, there is no further evolution. We just want to see what they do on their own. So as I said before, we have two metrics. So the first metric I already covered, so this is a box plot of, re box plot of results. First thing we see is that novel research is covering more area when compared to naive and NCC by two random controls, and that difference is significant at a level of 0 0.05. Now, what's even more interesting is that when we compare novel research to fitness, there is no significant difference. Novel research has been criticized as being a random search but it's performing just as well in this task as the traditional objective-based evolutionary algorithm. So let's look at our second metric, distance travel. We say we have a very similar trend. Now research is traveling just is traveling further than naive and NCC, our two random controls. And just as in the area covered, it's the same as fitness. So as I said before, these are just initial performances. We just pop these treatments down. We haven't done any further evolution, there's no target. So one question is, how do these skills uh, progress over time? If we allow evolution to continue, how do they progress over time? So let me be a little bit more specific. We're going to start new knowledge research runs on the large maze and use these treatments as seeds. So even to be even more clear, more specific, these treatments can be seen as generation zero for new knowledge research runs on the large maze. So, with this experiment, because we have no target, we're just going to run them for 50 generations. Um, about 50 generations, the uh, performance uh, levels off. So yeah, no target, run 50 generations. <coughs> now the first thing that uh, you can see, or maybe you can't see, is we have the knowledge search transverse in blue, and the distance transverse in red. They are right on top of each other. Again, it's showing that knowledge search and objective-based EA are performing the same in terms of this indirect skill measure. So that's the first thing I wanted to point out. The second thing I wanted to point out is that knowledge research in blue is covering more area than naive in green and NCC in yellow, are two random controls. Now, we know that this difference is significant, as indicated by the star at the bottom of the plot. So every five generations, we look at the difference between knowledge research and naive. If it is a significant difference at level 0 0.05, we add a green star. We then look at novel research with NCC. If there's a significant difference at 0 0.5, we add a yellow star. So if we look at the, so that's what we're showing at the bottom of the plot. And if we look at the significant difference between novel research and fitness, no surprise, there is a significant difference between the two. So one thing I want to point out is this area up here. As we can see on the generations, all of the treatments pretty much uh, come to the same point, which makes sense. They might start off initially different, but they're all being pushed and powered by me, so they all have this uh, push to explore and cover more area. So they're all going to um, pretty much hit the, the same theoretical limit for how much uh, area you can explore within the time limit. Excuse me. So that's area covered. So let's look at distance travel. Again, we, we see a very similar trend. Now we search in blue, it's traveling further than naive and green and NCC in yellow, and difference is significant for the majority of the generations. And for the most part, now we search and fitness, there really is no significant difference between the two. Now one thing I want to point out, many of you guys have probably seen it and kind of wondering what's going on, is what's going on at generation five? What's going on with that dip? Why don't we see a continuous um, upward trend? Well, keep in mind, so here, I probably should have shown you hard maze. So knowledge search agents uh, were successful. We grabbed successful knowledge search agents that got from the start location to the goal location. We put them into this maze. So they're used to going from the start location to the goal location. That's what they were born to do. So when we put them in this new domain, they're going to do that same thing. That's all they know. So they reach some of these final positions that are pretty far from the start location. But we haven't transferred over the hard path. This is a completely new domain, so there's no one, no one has explored it. No one has uh, taken advantage of the novelty there. So there's this whole area right here that no one's really explored. So of course, you know, novel research and fitness quickly take advantage of that area. Uh, and that's why we see this dip. But even with this dip, they're still better than the random controls, and they quickly recover.
I just wanted to point it out because it does seem kind of odd when you see that on the plot. So here we're measuring just uh, indirect skills. Um, but we also want to look at different ways of looking at skills, or at least competence, within these networks. And, and if you remember, in the original uh, large maze example, uh, hard maze, uh, agent had to travel from the start location to the goal. So we were wondering, can we do the same ex experiment in our large maze? And we can. So the way, sorry, so in this experiment, we're going to look at goal adaptation. So to be more specific, um, we're going to see the new knowledge search experiments with our treatments in the large maze. So essentially, we're going to plot individuals in the center of the maze and record the number of evaluations to get to a goal. I'm going to repeat that. We're going to record the, record the number of evaluations to get to a goal. Now, because the large maze is so large, we have many different options for a goal location. So for instance, we can have the agent start here and say get to the location on label there B. Or we can have the agent start here and get to the location on label K. Or so on and so on. The thing is, you know, because we have all these different potential options, why don't we just try them all? So well, that's what we did. So we can see that each of these goal locations can be seen as a different maze. It's own distinct experiment. So in one knowledge search run, the agent has to get from start location to J, and a completely different set run has to get from start location to N. And then as I said before, we're looking at the number of evaluations it takes for these treatment for new knowledge search runs seated with these treatments to readapt to these locations. So let's take a look at those results. So on the x-axis, we have our different goal locations. I want to point out that we have the innermost locations, E and A, at the far left. And we have the outermost locations at the far right. Now the reason we ordered it this way is because in theory, the closer a location is to the start, the easier it is. The farther away it is from the start, the harder it is. So this will make a little bit more sense later. Uh, Y-axis, we have median number of valuations to find a goal. So I'm going to overlay novelty search. So typical plot, we have 75th percentile, median 25th percentile. Let me add in naive and green, NCC and yellow. Now, novelty search on this plot is lower than naive and NCC. On this plot, lower is better. So that means you're taking fewer evaluations to adapt to these new target locations. So that means novelty search is faster at adapting to these new target locations. As you can see from the stars of the plot, this difference is significant for a majority of the locations. So now let's overlay fitness in red. You can see that for the most part it's right on top of the novelty. If we look at the stars, no surprise, there is no significant difference between the two. So now, uh, in summary, uh, what we've shown in this uh, paper, in this presentation, and confirmed from the original experiment, is that knowledge research is not, I repeat, knowledge research is not a random process, that these agents are building exploratory skills. And most importantly, and most surprisingly, um, knowledge research is the same as an objective-based evolutionary algorithm. Knowledge research is the same as the traditional objective-based EA that most of us have learned, most of us commonly use in our research, in terms of those same exploratory skills and in terms, and actually most importantly, to the readaption of new goals. So you know, we evolve a solution in one domain, we transfer it to another domain. So this is a summary of the work that we did. Uh, thank you all for listening, and that's my presentation. <laughs>